A lot of people are going to try this problem only to discover that they have confidently picked the wrong answer. So be very careful here and I think if you use common sense you can get this question right. But uh, let's take a look at the problem. So Dave can cut the lawn in 50 minutes. Ed can do it in 40 minutes. How long will it take if they both work together? All right, now we do have a multiple choice question here and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 55 minutes, B is 45 minutes, C is 31.6 minutes, and D is 22.2 minutes. Now, if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to show you how I'm going to solve this problem. All right, so one more time. Dave can cut the lawn in 50 minutes. Ed can do it or can cut the same lawn in 40 minutes. If they work together, how long will this job take? All right, so let's take a look at the solution. And again, one of these is the correct answer. And the right answer is D, 22.2 minutes. Now, I'm pretty sure that many of you use the average of 45 minutes. This is a very common wrong answer. I'll get back to the solution in just one second. Because a lot of people are saying, well, we got two people. Let me just kind of average the time. So if you chose 45 minutes, well, congratulations. A lot of people also chose that. And, um, you know, don't feel bad about this. But if you slow down and you think about it, this answer doesn't make sense, right? Because you have one person that can do the lawn in 50 minutes and another person that can do the lawn in 40 minutes. So if you got two people working on the same job, it should be much faster than uh, the one person, okay, even at this time right here, okay, the faster time, 40 minutes, right? So if you think about it, two people, well, it should kind of cut the time in half. So hopefully your answers were either C, 31.6 minutes, or D, 22.2 minutes, even if you didn't know how to actually solve the problem. Now, if you were thinking, well, maybe we can kind of cut the time in half so you can conclude that D was the right answer. Well, that is fantastic because that is correct. But we actually want to understand the math here on why D is the right answer. All right. Now, if you got this right, I have to give you a happy face and an A plus. Congratulations. Now, let's go ahead and get into why D is the right answer. Okay, so I'm going to use algebra to solve this problem. Now, what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is the concept of work. Now, when you study algebra, you kind of study how to solve different types of word problems, things that involve, let's say, for example, rate times time is equal to distance, so motion problems or mixture problems, etc., etc. But you also study something called work word problems, and this is one of these type of problems. So let me go ahead and give you kind of a general formula that we can apply to solve this problem. All right, so we're talking about algebra work word problem. So how do you solve a problem like this? Well, let's take a look at this formula. And if you understand this formula, well, you'll be able to understand how to solve the problem. Okay, so if you have two or more people, now it doesn't even have to be people, you can have like a machine do some work. So if we had machine A that can produce, let's say, a certain amount of widgets and you have a machine B that can uh, produce uh, uh, those same amount of widgets in a different amount of time, this is the concept of work. But here we have two people. So if you want to figure out the time it will take for two people to work together, here is the formula. If they work together, in other words, what's going to be the time working together? So the way it goes is this. One over the first person's time to do that job plus one over the second person's time to do that job is going to be equal to one over the time it takes for them working together. So this is the setup and you can see here we're going to have an equation. But again, this doesn't have to be people. It can be a machine. So one over machine, machine A's time to do a job plus one over machines B time to do a job. If these both of these machines work in tandem, this will be their uh, time working together. And if you have more than, let's say, two people or two machines, this can continue on. So you would have like one over persons, three time, etc. All right, so this is the kind of template that we're going to follow. 
And of course, we're going to get an algebraic equation, but you're going to see how nicely it is to solve this problem using this formula. OK, so now when we read the problem, we want to identify uh, each person's time, right? So clearly, we have those times. So Dave can cut the lawn in 50 minutes. So this would be kind of person one's time, right? So we're talking about minutes, 50 minutes. And then Ed can do the same job in 40 minutes. So this would be like person's two time, 40 minutes. And the question is, how long will it take if they work together? All right, so let's go ahead and just plug all this information into the formula. So Dave's time is 50 minutes, Ed, Ed's time is 40 minutes, and let's let x equal the time it will take for them working together. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this into our formula. So it's going to look like this. So 1 over x, this is the time it takes for them, to, or this is the time it will take them working together is going to be equal to 1 over the first person's time. So this is 1 over Dave's time. All right, so let's kind of go back up here. Remember, Dave can do the job in 50 minutes plus 1 over Ed's time. He can do the job in 40 minutes. This is going to be equal to 1 over the time it will take for them working together. All right, so now all we need to do is solve this algebraic equation for x, and we will have our answer. OK, so how do we solve this equation in algebra? Well, there is not just one way, but a very easy approach is to kind of clear all these fractions. We've got a lot of fractions going on here. So if we can kind of clear these fractions and rewrite this equation without all these fractions, it's going to make our life much easier. OK, so one great rule to remember in algebra when you have fractions in an equation is if you multiply the entire equation by the lowest common denominator of all these fractions. So here, this is 50, 40, and x. If we can find the LCD, the lowest common denominator, and then multiply the LCD by all the terms in the equation, we can clear the fractions in the equation. Now, of course, I am talking about kind of like Algebra 1 level uh, concepts here. And if you're having a tough time with Algebra, no worries. I have a ton of Algebra or a ton of uh, math courses that can help you out from Pre-Algebra, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, etc. You can find links to all of those in the description of this video. But uh, let's kind of continue on with this, right? So we need to find the lowest common denominator. So let's just kind of focus in right here. If we had two fractions, 1 over 50, plus 1 over 40, what is the LCD? And a good way to think about the lowest common denominator is the smallest number that both these numbers divide into without a remainder. OK, so 50 and 40. Right now, if you want to kind of think about this for a second, what's the LCD between 5 and 4? So if you had like 1 fifth plus 1 fourth, well, hopefully you're saying, well, I think it's 20, and you would be right. So the LCD between these two denominators is 200, but we also have this variable x right here. So the LCD is 200x. OK, now although the LCD here is 200x, I'm not going to use the full LCD. What I'm looking to do here is just kind of make my life easier and get rid of all these fractions. So what I'm going to do is multiply the entire equation by 200, right? So you don't necessarily have to use this x here. 200 is definitely going to help us out if we multiply the entire equation by 200, right? So it's going to clear these fractions away. And again, there's not one exact way to solve this equation, right? And just uh, as a reminder, the actual technical LCD here is 200x. Now, we could uh, use uh, 200x as well, and uh, that's perfectly fine. But I'm just going to use 200, all right? So again, what I'm looking to do is clear the fractions. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So 200 times the entire equation is what? Well, 200 times 1 over 50 is 4. Now, remember, when you multiply fractions, you're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So this is going to be 200 times 1. That will be 200. And then 1 times 50 is 50. 200 divided by 50, of course, is 4. Or you can kind of look at it this way. 50 goes into 200 four times. OK, so now we're going to have to take that 200 and multiply it by 1 over 40. So 40 goes into 200 five times. All right, so lastly, it's going to be 200 times 1 over x, and that's going to be 200 over x. All right, so we have 4 plus 5 is equal to 200 over x. Now, again, if I used 
my X here as my LCD, I would have just came up with 4X over here and 5X over here, and then the X's here would cross cancel and y'all would have 200. And that's a good approach as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of continue on with this approach. All right, so we have four plus five is equal to 200 over X. So now what we have to do is solve this equation. So we're gonna go ahead and add four and five. Of course, that's nine. And now I have nine is equal to 200 over X. But if I think of nine as nine over one, what I have here is one fraction that is equal to another fraction. Now, why is this so useful? Well, let's take a look at an easy example. If I have one half, and let's think of another fraction that is equal to one half. How about like four over eight? So when you have one fraction that's equal to another fraction, this is called a proportion in mathematics. And what holds true in a proportion is something called the cross product. If you cross multiply here, if I have one times eight, I get eight, that's gonna be equal to two times four, which is eight. Okay, so again, if you have one fraction that is equal to the, uh, another fraction, you can use the cross product. So I'm gonna think of, I'm gonna think of nine as nine over one, because I have one fraction over here, 200 over X. So what I could do to solve this equation is use the cross product, right? In other words, I can cross multiply like so, and we can solve for X. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I have nine over one is equal to 200 over X. So again, I'm gonna use the cross product because I have a proportion, one fraction that's equal to another fraction. So nine times X is nine X, one times 200 is 200. And then of course, to solve for X, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by nine. So 200 divided by nine is gonna be approximately 22.2 minutes. Remember, our units of measure are in minutes. Remember 50, one over 50, this unit of measure is in minutes, and so is one over 40. This unit of measure is in minutes. So our final answer will be in minutes. Okay, so this is how you can use algebra to solve work word problems. Now there is other approaches, and if you got the uh, right answer using another technique, that's perfectly fine. And again, if you need help with uh, algebra or mathematics, I have a ton of content on my YouTube channel from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. But uh, my best math help will be in my math courses, and you can find links to all of those in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.